As you can see, Christian, I have on the hot pot gloves, and I've had got you got safety glasses on, mm -hmm. and I have mine too, because today we're going to do some experiments that are sort of dangerous, so if you don't mind, I'll do them. Okay. okay. You know what this is? It's a pressure cooker. What happens inside there? Well, when you, when you put the weight on top, then the, and you put water inside with something in there, it'll, the water will turn into steam, and it will want to expand more. And, and there's no room for it to get out. Yeah, so so it, it's so much pressure in there. And that's why it's called a pressure cooker, cooker. right? And just to make sure that we understand there's pressure inside, your mother, your mother has a pressure cooker? Yes. Has she ever blown up a balloon with it? No. Probably not, no. Okay, but you see, there's, ordinarily there's a relief valve in there, but I'll put that balloon on the top. And then, you, then we said we needed a weight. Wait, to, to stop all the leakage. Ah, uh, it's beginning. Okay. Now, I've had that on low. Do I have well, to turn it up? Maybe just a tad. Okay, I'll turn up the stove. Now you can see the pressure Ooh. going up, right? And I don't want to let it go too far because if that balloon would break, oh. we'd have hot water flying all, all over, over the place. place. Yes. Yeah, so, but anyway, that proves that certainly there's pressure inside there, right? But now let's actually measure the pressure. And we can do that with a gauge. See that gauge down there on the table? Yeah. Okay. I'll put the cork back in the hole on the top of the pressure cooker again. Hot? Yeah. And now we'll put the gauge in there. Some pressure co cookers come with a gauge like this built right into it. In fact, this one originally had such a pressure gauge because on the back side here, you can read how much pressure you should have to cook various things. Okay. We'll turn it on. What do we need now? The weight. Okay, the weight coming up. Read the uh, pressure. Okay, let's see, half of one. Those are pounds per square inch. Oh, half a pound, one pound. Why, why, would, you, why would you want pressure to, to, to build up inside here anyway? Do you know? No. As the water has pressure put on it, its temperature goes up. It takes more energy to make it boil, so you can get it hotter than oh. 100 degrees Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit. So that's why food cooks faster. What's it doing? It's climbing. It's gone already to seven. Okay. Fifteen is supposed to be the maximum, according to the little diagram here. That's when you cook Swiss steaks. What'll happen at fifteen? In fact, It'll, you can see it already yeah. here. See it? How are we doing? Uh, we're at thirteen and a half. All right. Fourteen. Fourteen and a quarter. Half. Now you three see Three quarters. Okay, you see it coming out here? Fifteen. Yeah. See it coming out? Yeah. Okay. Now I'll turn it down. There, now you can really see it. So it automatically comes out. Yes, Pops because out. that's is as much pressure as you want. Whoa. See why I wanted to have safety glasses on? Yeah. Okay, now I have a sort of my own version of a pressure cooker, but it's made out of glass. So come over here. We'll let that cool down. Here's a blowtorch, and here's a container that I'm going to use as a shield. In the blow, flame of the blowtorch, I'm going to put this little glass container that's been sealed off. But see what's inside? That looks like water. Water, yes. Yeah. So this is a little pressure cooker. All we have to do is heat it up, and we'll change that water to steam. Steam. What should happen? It should blow up. You think it will? Yeah, because it needs to get out. Okay. That's why I have this container here. So if it does blow up, it won't shatter all over the place and, and dangerous. Okay. Are you ready? Not really, but okay. <laughs> okay. If I get it right down there on that flame, we should get it to boil. Any minute, any second. It's be, I can see and this you think what will happen to it? It's going to explode. Starting to bubble. Oh, it's starting to bubble. Oh, no. Yeah, bubbles, bubbles. Oh, it's going up. No! <laughs> <laughs> you thought it wasn't going to go, huh? Now you see why you never heat something in a closed container? Yeah. <laughs> because what happens to it? It, it has to get out. It, it has to get out. Has and it to. could be a dangerous explosion. And you see why I did it in this container so it wouldn't you get all over us? You see all this glass us? and... Okay, that's a little water. Oh, okay, water? well, thank you very much for helping me with a very dangerous experiment.
you're looking at a fruit within the mystery fruit. The one inside the ring is underdeveloped because in the flowering stage it was not properly fertilized. Instead of developing into a normal fruit with seeds, it ended up inside the ring looking something like a belly button. That's why it's called a navel orange. Chris, you and I may be starting a couple of little fires, so just to be on the safe side, I have a bucket of water, which okay. I'll put down over here. Well, that's pretty smart. Okay, now, here is a glass lens. There's the sun, and there's a piece of paper. You ought to know what to do, right? Oh, uh, well, kind you've of. You've done this before? Yeah, a few what times. What do you do? Okay, well, I think you've got to take it like this and aim, aim it so the sun's going right through here and just concentrate it into a little spot. Right. So it'll start burning the paper. Okay, and it started burning the paper. <sighs> little hole. Okay. Now here's, here's another hot. glass one, but notice the thickness of that. Yeah. It's, try, well, try concentrating the light with that one. Okay. Got to find yeah. the sun. Well, it doesn't seem to be burning much. No, because it's a, certainly a bigger spot, but notice it works in the same way that the glass lens did, didn't it? Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Okay, now try this one. Oh. Here's one that's a flat piece of plastic, see it? That's pretty thin. Yeah, okay, try burning a hole with that one. Let's hold it up and get the lights concentrated on it like that. Oh, okay. Wow! Oh, it's on fire, jeez! Yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty big mark. Yeah, and it did it pretty quickly, too, oh. didn't it? Well. What I don't understand yeah. is why this big, th why did this big thick one do it slower than this, this thin one? The thin, one. thin one. Well, I'll tell you, that's because this is a special kind of uh, lens called a Fresnel lens. Fresnel? But I, yeah, Fresnel. And I think I can explain it to you better if we go inside. So come on. Okay. Whoops. I'll take this one. So Chris, this is the lens that you've played with, yes, right? Yes, the one I used in the backyard. Right, okay, but you've also played with a lens like this that has a curved surface on the front. Mm -hmm. Well, this is my diagram of that. Okay. And let's trace the rays of light like scientists do. You start, okay. trace with your finger, trace the center beam. Okay, it just goes along there and hits the lens right. and just goes right through. Right, straight through and comes out over here. Now trace the top one. Okay, it does the same thing. Okay. And comes let's along stop and hits right there. the lens. Because notice what happens to it. It curves. Yes, it's bent right there, isn't it? Because of the... Because it, of the curve of the glass. Okay. Okay. Then it continues on over to here. Now trace the next, the bottom one. Okay, it does the same thing as the other ones. And it hits the lens, and because of the angle, it'll bend again. And right, and it comes up here. And hits the spot of light. So notice that all the bending of the light takes place only on the outside here where the glass is curved. Yeah. And none of this part in the center here is necessary because the light's going straight there. Okay, so point. remember that now, because we're going to make a plastic lens. Here's my plastic lens, yeah? Okay. That looks just like this one, right? Mm -hmm. okay. It's a little bigger, though. A little bigger, yeah. Now, I'll take the outside out. There's okay. the outside. Now, here's the next intersection, and I've cut it into two pieces. Which piece do you want? Uh, this one? Why? Because of the curve? Because it's got the curve on the top, sure. Okay, so I just put it in there. All right. Here are two more pieces. Which one do you want? The top one, because mm -hmm. of the curve again. Okay. Here's the last piece. Okay, it's well, I'll take the top piece again mm -hmm. because it's got more of a curve than the bottom one. In fact, the bottom doesn't have any curve at all. You see, here's all the glass that we got rid of. Okay, that's And the we now have buttons. it all piled up like that, and look. Hey, it looks just like this one, except it doesn't have as many ridges as this one, curved right. ridges. This has more of them, right? Yeah. yeah. Because I made this one myself. But that's the idea of a Fresnel lens. Fresnel lens? Yeah, Fresnel lens. It's called that because a scientist had the problem posed to him of how to get a great big magnifying glass in front of a searchlight. Oh. On a, on a, in, in, and he realized that if he made it as big as he wanted, it would be too heavy. So he got rid of the glass and just made these rings like that. Okay. And today they use them all over the place. They use them in a variation in car headlights and spotlights and all over the place. And like um, uh, magnifying glasses and telescopes and stuff like well, that? Well, no, they wouldn't use that in a telescope because they, they, they would use an, another system. Here, for example, is the other piece that we used. Yes. Remember it was real thin, burned real fast? Yeah, but it doesn't have any ridges. No, it doesn't. Well, here, rub your hands over it. Okay. With your they fingernail won't... especially. Okay. I can, yeah, I can see some little, uh, feel some little 
curved ridges on it. Yeah, exactly. Except definitely. there's more than this one. Else. Right, lots of them, thousands of them probably. Okay. Yeah, and because it is such, it's such a big piece, it'll mm -hmm. magnify too. What? Look at this. What do you see? I see a big red, big, 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 red big fork. fork. <laughs> right, because it is a magnifier, even though you can't see the curve. And because it is such a big one, we concentrated all the light from all this whole area down into a spot, and that's why you were able to burn that hole so much more quickly. Okay. Yeah. So, and, they, and sometimes they put these on the, on the back of cars so they can see down in the back. So when you see one, you'll know it's called a Fresnel lens. Boy, you have a big face. And so do you. Okay, now, what's going to happen when you let go? Well, it's going to go flying all over. You've done this before, right? Yeah. Okay, let her go. Watch it. Now, let's take a look at this one. Why did it go flying like that? Well, there's air in there, and the air is coming through, and it's since it can't go out this way, it's got to go out the hole. <laughs> That's sort of, think of it this way. There's air inside, right, under pressure. The balloon is squeezing it. Mm -hmm. so, but the pressure is equal and opposite in all directions. So nothing happens. Okay. Okay, now, when you release this end of it, this part can go out, but no, there's nothing counteracting this pressure okay. up here. So that's what makes the balloon go forward. Okay. Okay. This time, though, instead of just letting it fly all over, mm -hmm. I have a string stretched between two trees, see? I see. And here is a plastic straw on the string. And we're going to tape the balloon here. But before we do, I'm going to let the air out slowly so you can see how the balloon deforms as the air goes out. Watch. Okay. Well, it's coming out of that end. It's coming first. out of the front end. Mm -hmm. So put the tape sort of back in here. Okay. okay. Okay, got it? Okay. Yep. Put right there. Okay. Now let's put it way down at the other end so we can get a nice long run. Okay. Okay, Darren, let her go. Wow, great. Oh, good one. Okay, send it back. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Ready. Whoops. Tape that happens to me sometimes because, you know, why does it get twisted up like that? Well, sometimes the straw can come, come off or the tape. Yes, can... and sometimes the pressure coming out of the balloon might make it go sideways this way, so it'll push with yeah. various signs of pressure. And push the straw so if, off. So if you're going to do that, when you loosen the tape, I'll blow up another balloon. Okay. We'll make one more try. Okay, there it is. It's all yours. Okay. Put it right there. Okay, now I'll take okay. it back. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Wow, all right. great. That was a good one. How many North Poles are there? The imaginary north-south lines on a map all meet at a point called the geographic north pole, north pole number one. A compass points to the magnetic north pole that at the present time is in the Queen Elizabeth Islands. That's north pole number two. To the east is an imaginary point where the magnetic pole would be if the Earth had a giant bar magnet running through it. Satellites out in space respond to this so-called geomagnetic pole and scientists use it in their orbiting and space calculations. So there are three different North Poles, and of course, for the same reasons, three different South Poles, for a total of six poles altogether. Okay, I've got her names typed in, and I couldn't fit yours, so I just typed Mr. Wiz. Okay, second player is Jason, so what are yeah. we doing now? Well, we're. I just started the game of 3K Trivia. Okay. On PC 3K, Junior. Three. What was that? 3K Trivia. Oh, okay. Well, what are we going to do now? Well, 
Well, we'll get the game started. Question one. Mm-hmm. And you get to go first. Okay, it looks like a slot machine. What, what's going on there? Well, actually, these are the... These are actually just the... Uh, Various categories? Yeah, the categories, and there is... Uh, what have you got? Right now is sports. Okay, a bonus. A bonus will give you extra points. So yeah. what you've got is you can choose between sports and general. And general and... And I have to select a category. Yeah. And I see I have a number up there, and that's going to keep score, right? Mm -hmm. Now, besides these, there's other categories like sports and science and nature and... Well, there's sports right up there. Yeah. Okay, so there's science and nature and stuff. And, and what is the yeah. one over in the right there? General? I'll take general. Okay, that's about... That's pretty well anything. Okay. Okay. Oh, what's this 15 up there? That's your time limit. Oh, you, you mean I have hurry. to answer? Yeah. What is the capital of Vermont? Uh, Montpelier. How do you spell that? <laughs> M-O-N-T-P-L-I-E-R. Couldn't be, right? Sorry, Mr. Wiz. You oh, ran out of time. Peelier. The correct I answer the is Montpelier. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, that's all right. I got zero. So it's your turn now. Yeah. Okay. Different I got history and geography, time. yeah, and sports, and showbiz. Okay. Ooh. I guess I'll go for history. You have Jason, who oh you boy. got 15 seconds too. Who shot Lincoln? Who oh. shot Lincoln? I know. Oops. Eight, seven, six. I can't remember his last five, name. Oh. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> oh, sorry, Jason. John Wilkes Booth, John okay. John Wilkes Booth, right. Well, what's the whole point of this thing? Well, you see what happens is uh, you're trying to get points. I see. And How many questions are there all together? Well, we're playing a five-question game. Oh, in other words, at the end of five questions, it automatically adds up your score. Yeah. How about the total number of questions that are available? I think it's 3,000, uh, plus you can add 100 of your own to each category. Oh. Why would you uh, want to do this rather than play the board game? Well, this one is, you know, it's easy. You don't have cards and boards and little yeah. pegs sitting around. You and can play you can it yourself. And you play by yourself, too, yeah. I assume. Yes. General, history, and true trivia. True trivia. Uh, what is the, the uh, general? General, okay. That's sort of like I'm mi mixed up and... Sometimes they're hard, sometimes they're easy, so. What city is the business capital of the South, Atlanta? Atlanta, enter. He got it. Oh, no, you're ahead of me now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to get a good science one, because I'm good at those. Okay. Come on, science. Oh, bonus. That might give me extra points. Whoa. All oh, right. So now, the bonus is I ha I ha I'm forced to take on showbiz. Oh, what insect was, was the movie Them about? Ants. I saw that movie. All right, I'm ahead ah. of you. 500 points. <laughs> Ordinarily, you leave the beach when night falls. But this night, stay to see an amazing sight. You have to wait for complete darkness because even the flame of a match will frighten off the visitor from the sea. There it is, a sea turtle. Once out of the water, lights no longer dissuade her as she works her way up the beach. She has to stop frequently to rest. Moving across the sand is more difficult for her than swimming in the ocean, which she does with ease. She continues up the beach until she gets above the high tide line. With her back flippers, she begins to dig a hole in the sand, just the right size for her eggs. She will lay up to 120 of them, each about the size of a ping pong ball. When she's finished, she covers the nest by pushing sand with her front flippers toward her rear flippers, which shove the sand into the nest. She moves her body back and forth to conceal the location. Finally, she lumbers back to the safety of the water. During the two months of incubation, the eggs are vulnerable to predators. After emerging from the eggs, the baby turtles dig themselves out of the sand and scurry toward the sea. Out of the hundred or so in the nest, only a handful will survive to lay their own eggs. Some will be eaten by seabirds, others by large fish. 
their survival is further threatened by houses built on the beaches where the turtles come to lay their eggs. Commercial fishermen are another hazard. They inadvertently catch the turtles in their nets. They're cooperating with wildlife officials by releasing the turtles and by designing nets that catch shrimp but not sea turtles. To help the endangered animals survive, the state of Georgia has set aside sanctuaries on islands off the coast. Here, biologists observe the egg laying and tag females to see if they return to the same beaches year after year. They also dig up the eggs and transfer them to areas of the beach that are safe from predators. Learning more about their life cycle and continuing such hatchery projects may bring back from the edge of extinction the ocean reptiles called sea turtles. Jackie, have you ever been a detective? No, I haven't. Well, you're going to be one today because someone in this room touched that piece of paper there on my desk. And it's up to you to determine who did it. Okay. Kamal, did you do it? No, I didn't touch that paper. It's pretty obvious. Christian, did you do it? Nope. Now, both of your suspects have denied touching the paper. Yeah. May I give you a clue? Okay. Come over here and put on these glasses. Did you notice that both of your suspects were wearing glasses? No, I didn't. That doesn't give you a clue to solve the problem? No, not really. Here's another clue. Invisible tracing powder. Yes, invisible tracing powder. See, this is the kind of powder that when you shine invisible light on it, it turns the invisible light into a light that you can see. Oh, okay. And here is the light that you shine on it. It's oh. sort of, um, see how it's sort of purplish? Yeah, purple yeah, sort of violet. Yeah. Well, there's also ultraviolet in this, yeah. which is yeah. light that you can't see, but it's converted into light that you can see when you shine it on that powder. Now, so okay. it looks better here. Hold it near the edge of the paper like that, and I'll go turn okay. out the lights. See how it's sort of bluish purple? Yeah, purple. Okay, now put it over near the center of the paper. It's orange. Yes, that's the color of the powder when you shine an ultraviolet light on it. Yeah. So does that give you a clue as to how you can solve the problem? That means that if I shine it on their hands, if their hands are orange, that means that they was... They, were, they touched yeah. it right. And by the way, the reason they're wearing glasses is because ultraviolet light is not too healthy. You shouldn't be looking yeah. at it with your eyes. So these are glasses that, uh, that are sort of safety glasses for ultraviolet. Okay, go ahead and try okay, it. See if you can solve, solve the mystery. Okay, come on, put out your hands. No? Okay, turn them over. No? Okay, it's pretty obvious, Christian. Put out your hands. Turn them over. What'd you find? It's just normal. There's no orange. Yeah. Well, someone in this room touched the paper. So now what do you do? You did it. How are you going to prove it? Put out your hand. Turn it over. Put out your other hand. And turn it over. There, nice yeah. and orange. Yes. It's orange, you so, did so it. So you, sol you solved the mystery of who touched the paper by using invisible ultraviolet light and changing it to visible light with that, Ooh, that, that special powder. powder. Congratulations, you solved the problem. Thanks.